The guts of a solar car, a collection of batteries, wires, tubes, springs, struts and wheels, all made as lightweight as possible, all made of the best stuff they can afford. I mean, if we're gonna go, let's go now. Okay. They prepare the car for a practice run. They're worried about a thunderstorm looming on the horizon. A solar car needs sun to run, but it's got batteries for backup power. The most common question we get is, well, yeah. is what you're doing realistic? Are we actually going to see these in the future? And the answer is? Um, it's very possible. One, two, three, lift. A lot of the technology that's developed on solar cars is actually being introduced into production into some of the companies like GM and Ford and some places like that. By the time I graduate, I'm planning on uh, technology being at the point where it can be practical everyday use. Chase is ready. We're moving. The engineering students strive to perfect the sun-powered car. That means making sure it will run even under cloudy, rainy skies. Speed limit 65 miles per hour. It'll do 65, the speed limit, but race rules keep them strictly obeying all traffic laws. In the upcoming race from Washington, D.C. to Orlando, Florida, they'll be up against some of the best solar car teams from some of the best engineering schools in the country. A bunch of excitement, a lot of nervous. We're expected to run with the top of the pack and I think there's going to be a lot of adrenaline and a lot of excitement as to how fast we can compete and how good and where we'll actually finish. Which way do I go? They'd hoped for sunshine at the starting line but the weather didn't cooperate. Hope for a little bit better weather. So to save energy they pushed their cars to the starting line at the beginning of Sun Race 99 in Washington DC. There are engineering students from all over the country, among them, University of Missouri students from Rolla. 21 team members on our team. We've all worked for the last two years together, designing, building, manufacturing, preparing for the race, practicing. As they posed for the official photo, team members thought ahead of the challenges of racing from here to Orlando, Florida in 10 days, powered with nothing but the sun. We have a very competitive car as well, so I think that we're going to be able to run with the top of the pack. In fact, the Rala Solar Car led the pack at the starting line. That's them on the left, the white car. They qualified to be among the first three. They'd had fast times in trial runs. Now on course to Orlando, days away. Cars running on batteries and all teams hoping for sunny skies down the road. Ed Filmer, KY3 News. The race lasted 10 days. They finished in first place, but it took them two years to get this far. The amount of effort is unbelievable. We have about 30 team members who work, i probably say anywhere between 20 and 30 hours a week on this car. And uh, it's really exciting. To, uh, <laughs> it's really exciting to actually see the, that the efforts of those students have paid off. Paid off for the Rolla team after disappointing results in previous races. They came in 17th place two years ago in Sun Race 97 and barely finished at all in solar car races before that. We believe we, we pulled it off. They pulled off the victory despite racing under rainy skies most of the time. The rain started in Washington, D.C. 10 days ago, the start of the race. It rained almost every day of the race. A no sun makes it hard to have a solar race. And it was tough competition. They were up against some of the best engineering schools in the country. Schools and teams who'd been down victory lane more than once in previous races. The feeling is unbelievable. So this day at Disney's Epcot Center in Florida, it was the Rolla team's turn to high-five Mickey and Minnie and save her standing in the winner's spotlight for a race powered by sunlight. And the feeling to go from nothing to a finished product and at the most first place seems to be unbelievable right now, but it, the feeling is great. We did it. Governor Mel Carnahan couldn't resist climbing into the driver's seat of the Rolla team's solar car. We are very, very proud of your accomplishment. I know that you had to work awfully hard, that you made personal sacrifices, 
But as a result, you put it all together and you got the job done. What they've done is build a car powered by sunlight, a car they'll race across the outback of Australia, almost 2,000 miles. Last weekend, they were in western Kansas testing their car under similar conditions to the outback. Long, straight roads in the middle of nowhere. The main real thing I've heard specifically about the outback that it's hot and flat. Why well, Kansas? Because we're trying to simulate Australia, flatness of Australia, and we, we haven't been able to do that in Missouri. They'll compete against the best solar car teams in the world when they get to Australia, but the real challenge is making it through the outback. It's a huge desert, about the size of the American Midwest, with just one paved road through it. It's going to be hot. I'm just planning on being miserable as far as the outback, uh, but I, I'll, I'll enjoy it. It's going to be a marvelous adventure, and it's going to test their strategy, and we're expecting the very best of these young people. The team spent the last two years building, testing, and racing their car. Today's send-off by the governor and faculty members at University of Missouri at Rolla was a turning point. Now the challenge for the team is to race across Australia. It's going to be hard for everybody. I love your send-off theme. UMR takes on the world. I think you're ready for that. Thank you. I just hope we learn a lot from it. I don't think we can lose if we learn a lot from it. I, I think if we finish the race, it'll be a success. In the stifling heat of tropical North Australia, a huge truck snakes toward its mission. Just go up there now if you're ready and, and uh, do your thing. All right. Okay. Get rid of now. the agony early. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Thanks. We're up next. One by one, lightweight solar cars race toward the truck. The concern is the huge truck called a road train in Australia might blow small solar cars off the highway as they pass. If you can't do it, you shouldn't be, a, you shouldn't be on the road. Every one of the 40 solar cars in the world's solar car challenge has to pass this test. It's part of what they call scrutineering. Nathan Ruiz of Springfield waited for his turn at the road train test. He's one of four drivers for the University of Missouri at Rolla solar car team. Try not to take it too seriously where you're not having fun. Nathan's relaxed, but he knows the importance of the next few seconds. If we don't do what our car is capable of, it'd be a disappointment. The team's not concerned about the road train test, and in fact passes with no problem. But this is also a time trial, and their speed here determines their position in the starting lineup and gives other teams an indication of who's fast and who's not. 84.11 kilometers an hour. That's about 52 miles an hour. The Rolla team's car is capable of going faster, so their speed was disappointing. Okay. Is that as fast as it would go, or are we so sorry? They'd been through a lot the past few days in Darwin, Australia. Well, let's go back. And somehow they'd hoped they'd get a better start racing solar cars from around the world. And the time penalty is going to be... That's because the University of Missouri at Rolla team came to Australia fresh from a big win in America. They'd won the American Sun Race 99. They were greeted by headlines of their American win on race publications. And Australian network television wanted interviews with them. Stories that were eventually seen around the world. Had to have a lot of corporate help to get here. So in Darwin, Australia, as the Rolla team tested and fine-tuned their car, they tried to stay focused. They tested their car dozens of laps on a Darwin racetrack and constantly analyzed data from the car. The car looks to be mechanically and electrically ready to go. All the work left them only a couple of hours on a couple of days to sightsee. A cruise of Darwin Harbor filled with warships headed toward the East Timor crisis, just 400 miles from Darwin. From time to time, the Rolla team would have an hour or two to shop for souvenirs, boomerangs for sale everywhere. To save money, they stay in what's called a caravan park on the edge of town. It is home to people who found Darwin is at the end of the road, and they've never left. 
Their tight budget meant the Rolla team rented camper vans to travel, eat, sleep, and work in. Everyone, 18 people, nonstop, all day sleeping next to each other, going to eat together. It, it can get frustrating, but it's all worth it. The team adjusted to life down under, which includes driving on the wrong side of the road, and when they stopped at the only McDonald's in Northern Australia, new ingredients. There is a beet inside this cheeseburger. This, this purple stuff is a beet. So after days of preparation in Darwin, months of work in Missouri, the Rolla team thought they were ready for the race for the sun to take them across Australia. At the starting line of the World Solar Challenge car race, Darwin, Australia. It's early in the morning, and some teams are still working on their cars. Solar car drivers dread the chaos of the start. I think it's going to be pretty chaotic. <laughs> all the cars are lined up pretty close, and they just all start at the same time. 40 cars in all, built by teams from around the world. The first few miles of the 2,000-mile race are the most dangerous. All the cars are close together, all jockeying for position on the highway out of Darwin. The University of Missouri at Rolla car. Nathan Ruiz of Springfield is at the wheel. We basically want to be in a position where we don't have to do a lot of work, spend a lot of energy passing other teams. They know from experience that fast acceleration wastes energy and that getting in too much of a hurry can be costly especially in heavy traffic. In fact, one of the leading teams crashes their solar car trying to take a corner too fast. It was less than a mile from the start line, and it took them six hours to repair the car and get it back in the race. You said there's a slow-moving truck in the left lane somewhere. Just be advised. Every solar race car has to be followed by what they call the chase vehicle. That's the rules. Inside Rolla's chase, team members monitor data from the car. Battery power, speed, the strength of the sunlight. It comes in a constant flow from a transmitter in the solar car. Today we're hoping for like 300 miles at least. Uh, 350 would be great. Team President Matt Boehm of Carthage, Missouri. A few miles into the race, cars already on the side, broken down. The Rolla team wants to keep to a constant, efficient speed. It's kind of a steady-as-she-goes command for solar cars. I still hear you, Nathan. You're doing great. All's going well, but then an emergency. The solar car steering failed. Oh, toolbox. Give me toolbox. Yeah, do you got a punch? I need a punch. Something had rattled loose in the steering system. What do you need, Nate? There's a fine line between panic and high energy. Ready? They said they practice for things like this. We practiced emergency scenarios in Rala, but I don't think that has a heck of a lot to do with why it is that we're so together or when something goes wrong. I can't really explain it even. We're getting ready to get back on the road, so just stay on the road, okay? We function as a unit very well. Stay I can't explain right. why. It's just kind of the way the chemistry worked out between all of the guys and gals on the team. They drove further from civilization, deeper into the great Australian outback. They'd be on this road for seven days of desolation, emptiness. And they would settle into the routine of keeping their sun-powered car at its most efficient speed. Copy that. And at precisely five o'clock each afternoon, a race official traveling with each team would stop each car the end of that day's run. And they take off the top of the car, the part with the solar cells on it. And a race official paints a line on the highway. That's where they stopped at 5. That's where they'll start again the next morning at precisely 8 o'clock. And they turn their car's solar cells toward the setting sun to glean precious energy for their batteries for the next day of racing across the Australian outback.
dawn in the Australian outback. The Rolla Solar Car Team has been up over an hour working on their sun-powered race car. We have very little power, so we need to get some power in there just to even get started this morning. This dawn, like every day of the race, they coax kilowatts into their batteries. The equivalent of running out of gas it started to go really, really slow, so that was our clue that the batteries were, in fact, drained. The wind is brisk. They take turns holding onto the shell of their car. You didn't want your baby to get blown over in a gust of wind and then and smashed. It was a chore repeated every morning and evening, no matter what the weather conditions. Well, there's a lot of pride in our work, and that's why we stand there right next to it. Uh, you put a lot of work into the car uh, over two years, and it's, you wouldn't want to see that just blown away in the wind. Some mornings dawned clear, giving their car's batteries extra energy for the day's racing. Other days cloudy with no direct sun rays, only the meager light of a cloudy sky. But every day of racing, a routine. Charge the batteries as long as possible, then put the car together and begin racing. One minute. Synchronized watches worn by race officials traveling with each team began the race at promptly 8 o'clock every morning. The official painted a line on the road at 5 o'clock the night before. 30 seconds. That's where they stopped, spent the night, and that's where they started the race again the next morning. Go, go, go. go, go. go. Probably trying. Trying. It's not going. E -E. They yell EE -E for electrical engineer. Something's wrong with the car. The double E's. Everybody knows. Double E's do this stuff. Bobby's off. More people. Do your turn signal. Whatever they study in engineering school, that's their specialty. Electrical engineers for the electrical systems, the mechanical engineers for the car's body and mechanical parts. Teamwork is just sort of like a big nervous system where everybody seems to have a connection with everybody else about what's going on. Okay, we're on now, Lewis. Okay, good. He's got it now. The problem was simple. Wires not plugged in. But it cost them a couple of minutes racing time. Every minute that we're uh, on the side of the road is a, another minute that we're not racing. Ten minutes here, ten minutes there, it really adds up. Go. They raced through the Australian outback seven and a half days, almost 2,000 miles at 30 to 40 miles an hour. All the car's power comes from the sun. Solar cells make electricity that drives an electric motor. If it were a gasoline-powered car, it would be very efficient. The equivalent of 400 miles to the gallon going at very slow speeds, the car can, can get uh, the equivalent of 1,400 miles to the gallon. As they follow the car, their laptops are always on, looking for ways to reanalyze the data. We lost all telemetry. It started and if something went wrong, they had to fix it on the spot. Half a world away from their workshop in Rolla, there was no running to an electronics store if something went wrong. There was only toolboxes and ingenuity. Oh, man. Check that. Well, that's good. We fixed it. Okay. And trying to keep a sense of humor about it all helps, they said. It was pretty fun, though. Now we got to hook to this one here. Their efforts often went from before sunrise to well into the night. Work to keep their car going as fast as possible and experience for their future as engineers. I think it's going to be a challenge for me to sum it up on two lines of a resume. If I had one thing that I could make a, an employer understand why he ought to hire me, it would be this. From what I can tell, you know, I'm a student, but what I can tell about the real world so far is that they can't understate how important it is to, to be able to work as a team and to be able to accomplish things with a big group of people. Uh, the solar car is a heck of a way to, to do that. In the outback, it's best to look before leaping into the bush. Ants everywhere. Ants, tens of thousands of ants. They park their solar car on an anthill. Keep the ants off. In the outback, ants, termites, and... Just hang with it. The flies, they just made you feel like you were being attacked all the time. They saw flies, but not many kangaroos. In fact, this kangaroo crossing sign was the only kangaroo many of them saw. Thank you. Kangaroos can be seen pinned up, a few here and there as tourist attractions.
What the Rollins Silver Car Team saw as they drove across the outback can best be described as a vast expanse of nothingness. Imagine a place as large as the American Midwest with just one paved road through the middle of it. Biggest amount of nothingness I've ever seen. <laughs> I've never seen so much of nothing. Raw, I guess, would be the best word to describe it. Well, I think of the American West as having as being unpopulated, but but this is doesn't even compare. It's just much, much less densely populated than hour after hour, day after day, the Rollins Silver Car team inched across the continent. The rest of the solar cars were scattered up and down the highway. The fastest hundreds of miles ahead, the slowest hundreds of miles behind. The race was, for hours on end, uneventful. It gets boring after a while when you're going 35 miles an hour all day. Each day's race lasted from 8 in the morning to 5 at night. A race official traveling with each team timed them. Wherever they stopped, that's where they spent the night, and often that was in the middle of nowhere. I enjoyed it all, uh, being out there in the middle of nowhere. It didn't bother me at all. Their menu was Spartan. Cold cereal in the morning, sandwiches at noon, and each night... Big brimmed bowl full of rice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After you're together that long, it's really hard to kind of stand each other. You have no privacy. You give that up for three weeks that we've been here. Places like these, every 100 miles or so, they call them roadhouses. Combination gas station, grocery store, and saloon. And at this one, a walk-up window. Aboriginal people suffer from chronic alcoholism near the roadhouses. There's a lot of fighting, a lot of problems. Aboriginal people are no longer welcome inside here. It's a life all unto itself. There's homesickness. People you love, there's, you, you don't get to talk to them as much. It's completely different than anything we've ever done before. They raced through the outback seven and a half days. Almost 2,000 miles of sun, heat, clouds and wind, ants and flies. Looking down the road to the finish line. Hopefully tomorrow. I hope it gets easier. It seemed kind of like a disappointment. Dawn on the last day of racing through the Australian outback. Reality had set in. We knew coming into it that we weren't going to win. The winner of the World Solar Challenge car race had crossed the finish line two days before. It's just the reality kind of hits us. As student engineers, even before they came to Australia, they had calculated that their solar car could not possibly keep up with the others. The winners were exotic, expensive cars designed especially to cross Australia. What's the mood of the team right now? And I think it's a little disappointing, but I, hopefully tonight, after, they, after the sun goes down, we can kind of kick back and relax a little bit and, I don't know, kind of ease the tensions. The cheers for their victory the summer before were still fresh in their minds. They won Sun Race 99, the American solar car race. And the University of Missouri at Rolla was so proud of the team, the administration encouraged them to go to the World Solar Challenge in Australia, the World Series of Solar Car Racing. But the rules for the race across the outback of Australia were different. The World Solar Challenge race allowed for stronger, more expensive batteries and solar cells. But the Rolla team did not have the time or money to upgrade their solar car before the race began. We didn't have time. We weren't anticipating coming here at all. As the Rolla team set out to finish this year's World Solar Challenge, they considered what they'd accomplished. I was prepared for much worse. I never would have learned all the stuff I have sitting at home doing schoolwork. I was pretty much surprised how smoothly it went. We 
we've learned a lot about solar cars, looking at all these other solar cars and all the, the things that the other teams have accomplished. And we've learned a lot about how to pull together a trip to Australia. Guys who are going to be around to, to send, send the next car on its way are going to have a lot easier time with it. The finish line in Adelaide. Take your time, get the driver out. Well done. Nathan Roos of Springfield in the driver's seat <laughs> for the final day of the race. Nathan and others in the Rollins Solar Car Race Team had already started planning their next car. They say they'll be back for the next race across the Outback in 2001. Well done, anyway. Hours after the race, at a beach where they camped after so many days of desert and heat, Nathan Rus shared his vision, the shape of a solar car for their future. What I've learned is that there's not a, there's never a problem you can't solve, and, there, and failure is not an option. People on the team are excited about what we're going to do in 2001, and, and, and I have a lot of faith. Some parts of me really expect to see us winning in 2001. These guys are really willing to put in the work and really have the, the brains and the knowledge to pull off something great. I'm going to come back in two years, definitely. It's a lot of fun, a rush of racing the solar cars, and that's, that's something you don't get doing anything else.